Hello everyone, this is Fan. Today I'm going to present revisiting consistency regularization for semi-supervised learning. This is a joint work with Anna Kukleva and the professor Ben Schiller from MPI Informatics. So in this work, we revisit the successful consistency regularization framework for semi-supervised learning and propose a simple yet effective improvement called Fisher distance loss. Let me start with a brief introduction of the consistency regularization in semi-supervised learning. So in a common semi-supervised learning classification problem, we have a labeled data set and a non-labeled data set. The high-level idea of consistency regularization is that the model should be invariant to different perturbed versions of the same image. And this perturbation can be any types of noise injection. For example, data augmentation or Gaussian noise or even dropout can be thought of as a way of inducing noise into the pipeline. And for perturbed versions of the same input, the model's output should be the same. For example, the feature generated from the encoder should have a small L2 distance, or the predicted class label should be the same. And here we show a consistency regularization based method called the fixed match. So here, given an uh, input unlabeled image, we apply data augmentation twice, once with weak augmentation and once with a strong augmentation. And this weakly augmented image is fed into the model, and then you get the prediction here. And then you can compute the pseudo label from it. And then in the second branch, the strongly augmented image is fed into the same model for computing the cross entropy loss with the pseudo label computed from here. And together with the standard cross entropy loss on the label data set, this method can achieve very good performance. Um, in the above pipeline, we found that uh, images from different augmentations have large visual differences. For example, here we take a few images from Cypher 10 and apply weak and strong augmentation on them. You can see that the strong augmentation is very different from weak augmentation, and we question whether the model should be invariant to such strong perturbations. And we believe making the model equal variant rather than invariant to differently augmented images should lead to even better generalization performance. And by equal variance, we mean that features from different augmentations should still be distinguishable in the feature space, while the classifier can still classify them as the same class. And following the uh, consistency regularization framework, we propose CR match with our normal feature distance loss here. Uh, so here we take an unlabeled image and apply data augmentation twice, once with the weak augmentation and once with the strong augmentation. And then we use the feature encoder here to extract the weak feature and the strong feature from them. And then these two features are fed into global average pooling layer and then into the linear classifier to compute cross entropy loss based on the pseudo labels. And also on the right hand side, the same two features uh, are taken from the feature encoder, pass through a linear layer, and then we compute the cosine distance between them. And then by maximizing this uh, cosine uh, distance, we can impose the equal variance among features. Because in this way, the, feature, uh, the features from different augmentations are pushed apart from each other. And if you minimize the cosine distance between these two features, then you basically pull features together. And in this way, the model is encouraged to become invariant to different augmentations of the same image. And next, I will talk about the details of uh, how our method process one batch. So given a batch of uh, labeled and uh, unlabeled data, the total loss consists of uh, three terms. So the first one is the standard cross entropy loss for labeled data. So here, uh, PI is the class label for image XI. Alpha is the weak augmentation, and the F denotes the feature encoder, and G is the linear classifier. And for our unlabeled data, we have uh, two losses. The first one is our normal feature distance loss. For any unlabeled image UI, so we first compute the loss based on the uh, pseudo label, which corresponds to the left part, uh, the left branch here, and then we compute the distance between weak and strong features here using the cosine distance. And this is an indicator function. And this CI here is the confidence score from the model's prediction. So basically, the encoder function here means that uh, only if the model's prediction is confident enough 
that is higher than a predefined threshold tau, we consider the loss from this image. And this mechanism is also inspired by fixed match. And lastly, uh, we have a rotation prediction loss here as an auxiliary task, where the input image is randomly rotated by 90 degree, 180 degree, and uh, 270 degrees. And a model is asked to predict it, uh, which degree the input uh, image is rotated. And next, uh, I'll show the mean results of our CR match on CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 with different numbers of uh, label data. For example, on CIFAR 100, we have 4, 25, and 100 labels per class cases. This table compares the error rate between different methods. The results are averaged over five rounds of uh, different uh, data splits, and our CR match achieves a new state of art uh, across data sets and settings. For example, on CIFAR 100 with four labels per class, we outperform the previous state of art by 4.8%. 4 and here are more results on STL10, SVHN, and the Mini ImageNet. And uh, we outperform the state of art in all settings. And in this table down here, we ablate uh, two components uh, in our method, rotation prediction loss and the, the fissure distance loss in four settings. We can see that uh, both rotation prediction loss and the fissure distance loss is actually very important to achieve the final performance. Only on CIFAR 10, the best result is achieved by adding fissure distance loss alone. And uh, here I show the ablation studies. So in this table here, we investigate a factor of uh, different distance functions in the unlabeled data loss. We tested three distance metrics L2 distance, cosine, and uh, JS divergence. And based on whether the model minimizes the distance or the negative distance, we group them into equal variants where the features are pushed apart from each other and the invariants where the features are pulled together. We can see that for each type of uh, distance metric, for example, uh, minimizing the cosine similarity, which pushes features apart, is about like 1.5% better than minimizing the cosine distance, which pulls features together. And also, uh, and also either imposing equivariance or invariance outperforms the vanilla model without feature distance loss. And this model gives the performance 48.9% uh, error rate. And on the right hand side, we provide an analysis uh, to demonstrate that uh, increasing the feature distance indeed provides equivariant features. And we denote here the model trained with cosine similarity as uh, CR equivariance and denote the model trained with cosine distance as uh, CR invariance. So we trained an SVM on top of the features extracted by these two models to predict whether a certain kind of transformation is applied on the input image or not. So the intuition behind this is that uh, specific transformations of the input image should be more predictable from equivariant representations. And this table shows the results of this binary classification. We can see that uh, for all transformations, translation, scaling, rotation, and uh, color jittering, features from CR equivariance has a lower error rate, which means that CR equivariance indeed produces more equivariant features than CR invariance. So here's another sanity check of the cosine similarity between differently augmented image features for CR invariance and uh, CR equivariance. So here the alpha means the weak augmentation and the capital A means the strong augmentation. So the first row here shows the cosine similarity between weak augmentation and the original images. And the second row shows the cosine similarity between strong augmentation and the original images. And the third row here shows the cosine similarity between weak augmentation and strong augmentation. So here we can uh, uh, take the whole training set from the CIFAR 10 and extract the feature using CR invariance and uh, CR equivariance. And we can see that the cosine similarity between weakly augmented images and strongly augmented images are indeed smaller for CR equivariance, which means that uh, those two types of features are more distinguishable in the feature space if we use CR equivariance. And uh, here in table 5, we study the effect of uh, different combinations of uh, weak and strong augmentations in feature distance loss. And our default setting is this uh, um, weak strong pair, 
where the distance between the weak and the strong features are pushed apart. But potentially, we could also uh, push apart features from weak augmentations or features from uh, strong augmentations. And the results are shown in this table. We can see that uh, the weak strong pair gives the best number for both CR invariance and the CR equivariance. But CR invariance is uh, worse than CR equivariance. Therefore, in our main results, we push apart features from different kinds of augmentations rather than the same kind, because this is where the largest feature discrepancy can be expected. And here in table six, we study the effect of the projection head and the place to apply feature distance laws. And here AB uh, means uh, the place where we take the features. So A means that we take the feature directly from the encoder, and B means that we take the feature after the global average pooling layer. And we tested the three types of projection heads. So the first one is without any head. And so the feature is directly fed into the loss. And the second one is our default. So the feature goes through a linear layer before computing the loss. And the last one uses a three-layer multi-layer perception. And from the table, we can see that if the linear layer is removed or replaced with a three-layer multi-layer perception, then the performance decreases to 48.3 and 47.5, respectively. And the same conclusion can be seen when the feature is taken from the global average pooling layer, as shown in the second row here. And this justifies the choice of our CR match. And lastly, I would like to show you a TSNE plot for features extracted by CR match and CR match without feature distance loss. As shown in this figure, we can see that uh, CR match with feature distance loss produces better separation between classes. For example, CR match forms two clear clusters for a caterpillar and a butterfly, but uh, CR match without feature distance loss mostly mixes them up. And another example is that uh, the overlap between uh, crab, bowl, and pear is much less uh, for CR match compared to CR match without. Uh, feature distance loss. So to conclude, uh, uh, in this paper, we, pro, uh, we improve uh, data augmentation-based uh, consistency regularization by a simple yet effective technique for semi-supervised learning called feature distance loss. And it can uh, regularize the distance between feature representations from differently augmented images of the same class. And also, we show that uh, while encouraging invariance results in good performance, encouraging equal variance to differently augmented versions of the same image consistently results in even better generalization performance. And furthermore, we provide a comprehensive evaluation study on different uh, distance functions and different augmentations. And in the end, uh, in combination with like other strong techniques, we achieve new state of art results across a variety of uh, standard semi-supervised learning benchmarks, and specifically in low data regimes. And with this, I conclude my talk. Thanks for your attention.